Hi, Tony. Good morning, how Michelle. How are you? I'm very well. Thank Good. you. Welcome to our uh, data room. Yeah, thank you very much. There really is so much to see here. So I think we probably just better crack on and get some questions. Yes, I, we hope lots of people come and see. There's a huge amount of data. I know a lot of people here were quite heavily involved in the sea lion project um, when the exploration phases were going on. And originally, I gather we were promised a start date for all of this, which was actually a couple of years ago. Can you just tell me a little bit about why there has been this delay? Yes, of course. I'm afraid that the years 2015 and 16 were pretty miserable years for the oil industry worldwide. Uh, and of course, uh, Premier Oil was affected by that as well, and indeed the sea lion project. And that was driven by the very low oil price mm -hmm. we, uh, we all experienced at that time. Uh, what, what we did manage to do during those uh, dark years uh, was continuing with all the work on the engineering uh, side of the project. So we're now in the uh, pretty healthy position that the project is effectively fully engineered. And um, with the recovery in the oil price that we've seen in the second half of 2017, continuing yeah. today, uh, we can push ahead with the project. It's very exciting. Excellent. And so in those years, in the crash years, what were Premier doing to keep afloat, to keep going? How, how did you survive that? Well, uh, we maximised the revenue from our existing fields. Uh, we cut costs, uh, the whole industry cut costs. And actually, that's put us in a pretty healthy position today as oil prices have recovered. You mentioned um, existing development, and there's one existing development in particular that I would like to talk about briefly, and that's the catcher field in the yes, North Sea. Right, I understand right. that the Sea Lion project here is going to be almost a carbon copy of what's been going on there. Yes, sea lion's a little bit bigger than catcher, okay. um, but uh, from an engineering point of view there are many, many similarities. It's a floating production vessel. Uh, we've actually uh, planning a similar number of wells on uh, sea lion as, as, uh, as we have with catcher. I mean one of the uh, important things I think from a sea lion perspective is that the group of uh, contractors that we worked with on catcher are all very interested in working with us again mm -hmm. on sea lion. I'm going to move on now slightly to the sort of the current uh, environmental impact assessment that's yeah. going on, yeah. sort of the main thing that's going on at the moment. I just wanted to ask you, because I had a quick look through it earlier, yeah. just, I must admit I didn't look at the big one, I looked at the non-technical summary, right. the one that's actually vaguely manageable. Right. Yes. <laughs> so you go through it and a lot of things say, you know, moderate risk and they sort of light up in yeah, your orange on your risk assessment. Can you just explain to me why in this industry moderate is an acceptable level of risk and what, what does that actually mean, moderate level of risk? Yes, the, I mean, the industry when it talks about moderate risk is to, still talking about extremely unlikely events. Mm -hmm. So when people talk about moderate risk I think it needs to be put into, into perspective. Uh, some of the um, incidents that we're preparing for are extremely unlikely indeed. Uh, but in our terminology, that's still moderate risk. So we have very good data from the wells that will feed into that production vessel, uh, pressure data, etc. Uh, so uh, the whole project will be designed on the basis of that pressure data and will be uh, in a position to manage any risk from the wells. This is not um, a Macondo moment. Um, in addition, um, we're actually helped uh, in many ways uh, by the physical location of sea lion uh, okay. up to the north of the islands and the wind and tidal flows. So if in the uh, unlikely event of a spill, um, then frankly the, the, the wind and the tidal conditions will help to disperse uh, any spillage uh, away from the Falklands and indeed away from uh, South America. But obviously some oil will be coming back to the Falklands because you need to transfer it to yes, your partner vessels right. in Barclay Sound. Can you just tell me a little bit about uh, what people might, might expect to see? A cr critical or? part of the operation is, is, is moving the oil from the tanks in the production vessel into uh, trading tankers and, and those are the vessels that then carry the oil to market mm -hmm. wherever we choose to sell the oil. Um, we're still hoping that we can do much of that uh, offshore close to the sea lion field. However, of course, uh, we do need relatively calm uh, wind and tide conditions for okay. that particular operation. So there will be occasions on which uh, what we'll do is run a shuttle tanker into Barclay Sound uh, and we'll then uh, transfer in the sound oil from the shuttle tanker into what we call a trading tanker, which is a 
you know, uh, the global uh, tank. Excellent. And lastly, for now, I understand obviously sea lion is sea lion one, isn't it? So there it is, is more it to is. come. Can you just it tell is. me a little bit about how long you expect this first sea lion uh, right. project to run, and then what what can we expect to see with sea lion Mark Two? Right. Well, in, in round numbers, we're developing in phase one about 220 million barrels of oil. Uh, we have discovered, along with uh, our partners over a number of years, something like 500 million barrels of oil in the North Falklands Basin. So, as you rightly say, uh, there is certainly a phase two to, to follow. Um, we're focusing on <laughs> phase one right now, and uh, of course, uh, in many ways, phase two will be easier. Uh, after phase one, a lot of the supply chain, the logistics, the systems, the processes will be in place with phase one. Um, phase two is further south um, of the uh, initial development and uh, yes, there's another sea line to come. Excellent. So if things go according to plan for you, you'll be busy here for the next, what, 20, 30 years? Yes, I might not be busy here for the next <laughs> uh, 30 years, but uh, we certainly hope Premier will be. Uh, we're very committed uh, to the Falklands, to Sea Lion. It's a huge part of our future. Uh, so um, that's why we're still here.